Hi, I'm Eric with Delmanco and welcome to another video. Today we're jumping into Batidao Tropical, uh, which is the fourth studio album from Pablo Guitar, who I've really gotten into this summer. And I'm so happy that we are getting into her again with her newest release. The only other full-length project I've reacted from her before is 111. And I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a nice little like party playlist. Was it so cohesive as an album? Not as much, but I think it was also just really enjoyable, so I didn't really have that many gripes about it, like at least in my memory. We've also already heard a couple of the singles from it. I have videos on both of those. And I'm just really so happy to get into the completion of this full era. I'm sure there might be like music videos to come in the future, but for now, uh, let's listen to the whole project. Thank you for requesting this video, and anyway, let's get into it. Track number one is Ama Sofra Cora, a song we've heard and a song we enjoyed. Let's hear it again. It does still sound like that romantic scene in a movie. Bravo music. Yeah, it makes you want to do like that. <laughs> and I slow jam to get you in the movie now. <laughs> Piranha. Piranha. That's the part that I can do really well. Her vocals, as always, beautiful. Thank you to whoever left that comment on the Amasith Bashora um, reaction about Piranha meaning something other than fish. I'm realizing I pronounce it incorrectly every time I say Amasith Bashora. Shora. So that was Amasith Bashora and beautiful start to the album. Definitely not the vibe I feel like I thought Pablo Vitar would go into after hearing like 111 and a couple other singles of hers. So like the fact that she went into like that, you know, that more sad, slow groove rather than, you know, the empowered pump it up kind of anthem uh, style that I think I had been accustomed to before hearing that song. Uh, I think, yeah, I think it was a different direction, uh, and I'm very intrigued by it. Uh, it seems like this could be, I mean, the cover looks like it's not going to be a sad album. It looks like it's going to be like a, you know, hot under the collar album if you're even wearing a collar. I feel like the the cover makes it look like it's going to be another empowering album, but so far, I mean, this is, you know, it's a sad song. The music video is kind of sad, though there was cheating in it, so like, Pablo, you're not in the right necessarily. But especially knowing that Triste Conti comes after this, like, I wonder how happy this album is going to be. Like, are there going to be more empowering anthems? I, I just don't know. I don't know if this is supposed to be like a sonic departure or like she wanted to try something different with the singles versus, you know, the rest of the project. I don't know. Track number two is Triste Conti. Yet yeah, another song that I heard. I really enjoyed it. I like this one better than all my sofa shora. And I'm really excited to listen to it. Yes, let's take it back to the 2000s nostalgia. This is a little like male voice coming in. Go off. Do 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 do. Bruce J. Cole style. I do love the choreography that is in this music video. It's just really pretty and fun. Uh, the song we've enjoyed, like, I mean, it's a pretty chill number. I mean, all Pablo Vitar songs are normally on the shorter side, and Tristy Comte is just over two minutes. Uh, it feels its length, it's not long at all. But it is a nice little, you know, bop, like, sad, but, you know, feeling yourself a little bit, or, you know, feeling those urges and desires, you know. As Pablo Vitar is very open about her, you know, libido. Uh, so yeah, I, I enjoy the song. It's definitely like a chiller vibe and less sad than On My Sofa Shora and seems more creative to me than On My Sofa Shora. But also again, I don't know the musical style as much as like, you know, if you're Brazilian and you're like from this area of the world, which I'm really trying to get into it, definitely. But like, to me, Amar Sofra Shora does sound more 
like something I associate with like uh you know romantic movie where it's like a triste comte like it has that like arcade vibe and I just like like that kind of creative outlet or at least that those kind of associations I think those are more fun and experimental but again I'm not familiar with the musical styles as much as I'd like to be and so again if you have any thoughts about either the song or the rest of the project of course let me know down in the comments below. Track number three, Ah uh, Lua. We are now moving into the rest of the album and the part of the album that I have not heard before and I'm very excited to do so. Oh, she's singing. Oh, that's new. I like these like conga or bongo pits with this like ups, upscale production. Ooh, I like she is going really high and low. She's really showing off her voice here. Oh, I think she said Shora again. Oh, this is really beautiful. I'm really mesmerized by her voice right now. Oh, that was beautiful. Oh, that was a satisfying drop too. That drum is just like run really fast. Whack. So that was Alua, and that was a very pretty number. I really enjoyed it. That was my favorite of the songs I've heard so far. So that makes me very excited to get into this project more because stuff I haven't heard, I enjoy better than stuff I've heard. So like that's really cool. Sonically, it's beautiful. Like I like the bongos and the conga elements of it, but I also like the like synths being added, like it just felt like waves rushing over me and it was like beautiful. I felt like I was at the beach with this, you know, tropical baptism. Um, like, yes, I really enjoyed like the sonics of the song. Lyrically, it's also very good. Like it continues the similar themes, you know, make this album cohesive about like, you know, a relationship not working out and being sad about it. And this one is specifically about like how she sees this person like you know out and I remember when they were happy and I know I made a mistake and I think that's the cheating that's being alluded to here but like yeah like I, I just really enjoyed the song more production wise than lyrically like lyrically is good like the song is also about like I have the love that the moon gave me, which I, I don't know what that means. Is that just like the thrill of the night? I, I don't really know. Feel free to uh, mention it down below. But it's a foro, which I, I realize that foros from Pablo Vitar apparently are the ones I end up really liking. I enjoyed this song. I thought it was beautiful. I definitely would like to listen to it again. And I, yeah, I think mainly for its aesthetics rather than its lyrical content, which is okay. Like I have, different songs of Pablo's that are more for lyrics versus production. Track number four is Ansia, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right because there's like a carrot on top of the A, which I don't know what sound that makes. Oh, this sorry feels like it's gonna be dramatic. Oh, this is pretty. It's slow, but it's pretty. This is involuntary, like moving. Oh, I like that photo of the doom, and then like, here's a gong. Oh, she's reaching a high with her notes. Oh, 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 guitar. Is that one really? Okay. Oh, keep those high notes coming, Pablo. You're doing great. Oh, look how it ends. So that was Ansia. And I really enjoyed that song. Like, it was very pretty. Like, it definitely had the slower vibe, but it was like, Pablo was really singing her heart out, and it was beautiful. Like, I particularly enjoyed it. Sorry, there's a leaf blower behind me, even though there's no leaves on the ground. I don't know. But yeah, so, like, this song was very beautiful. Lyrically, it kind of goes more into that adultery of the. I waited for you, like, the longing was too great, and so I found this other guy that, like, made me feel satisfied as a woman, and, like, made me feel fulfilled, and 
didn't give me the doubts that you did. I don't know if this makes Pablo Vitar pro, you know, sleeping around, but I think at the same time, it does really show that there is a full narrative trying to be shown here. All my so for sure did kind of display the narrative, like in a music video, really displayed the narrative that is being really told here. And so, I mean, I really appreciate that, like especially in comparison to 111, where 111 didn't feel as much like an album as much as like a, a playlist or a compilation. Whereas this feels like the song was supposed to link together a little more. And I really appreciate that. Like I feel like I'm actually getting that feeling. And I think part of that is, you know, there's no features, so there's not gonna be that many changes in production. Even though all the songs definitely sound distinct, like it does allow Pablo Vitar to focus on her craft of like having all these, you know, songs really like tell the whole narrative and so I'm really happy about that like I think the song is very pretty is it the same level as Alua I don't know again the leaf blower is probably distracting me a little much but like I did enjoy the song and it was really nice track number five is a Paishanata again my pronunciation of Brazilian Portuguese is not worked on effectively often enough Oh, this has more interesting production, but similar to Tuesday Comte. Oh, I like the speed, like, run of it. It feels like a, a video game, like, like you're putting on, like, hard mode. Oh, are we gonna get a good drop? Oh, no, we went really soft and calm. Apaishana. I think I was right. Oh, we, oh, we're building. Where are we going? Oh, it had a break. I'll survive with that. That was honestly a very confusing drop. I'll have to hear that again. Again, we're seeing Pablo Vitar's amazing voice here. But not right now. There you go. Oh, there we go. Oh, not right now. So that was a passionata or like passionate. And that was a very pretty song. It was a fun song. Like I definitely really did that production very much to the, especially the intro of Triste Comte. And I, I really enjoyed it. Sonically, I enjoyed it. The drops were interesting. Definitely something I have to learn to abide with more, but I think I just like the production overall, that that didn't really matter too much for me. Lyrically, I enjoyed it as well. It's basically being like, stop and listen to what I have to say. I realized I'm in love. Love came so suddenly. I don't know if this is about the side person or the main person. My thought is it's the main person, especially in thinking about how, like, in Alua, we have the moon, and here it's the moon lit night that really is, you know, making her feel passionate and in love with the person. So I think that's really beautiful. I think that's very, uh, yeah, I think that's a really cool way that we are connecting, you know, an earlier song with this song in a way that doesn't feel redundant. Like this project so far, it doesn't feel redundant in anything it's doing. Like it feels like it's actually just, you know, trying to continue the narrative and to make it cohesive rather than trying to, you know, just reiterate the same, you know, sentences over and over. Track number six is Otro Song. Oh, what is this introduction? Oh, this is like dance pop fun. I wanna like run to this song. No, I don't run. I feel like I'm going back to like Sonic Heroes or some other like, you know, adventure video game. Oh, I like this like talk back between the high push and like her regular voice. I don't know, this is joy I'm getting here. Oh, instead of like a second like chorus or whatever, we're already getting into an outro. This song is short. Oh, you're just gonna end like that? So that was Ultra Song. 
and that was very fun. Like, I really enjoyed that song. That's definitely gonna be my favorite one now. Like, it's really just like a dance pop, you know, EDM really, like, just vibe. Uh, basically, lyrically, is the hi, I'm Pablo, like, you know, I'm gonna move you, like, you know, make you dance and, like, make you love me, you're gonna remember me. But I love how it starts and ends with hi, I'm Pablo, who cares, pretty much. That's how it translates to at least, and I just think that's, inc that's fun. The song is fun. My only problem with it is that it's too short. It's under two minutes. For what reason? For what reason? I think it should be, like, a three-minute song. Four-minute song. I know I've never seen a Pablo Guitar song, I don't think, at least, that's over three minutes. But it, I, I like it if I saw that. Like, you could have basically just repeated stuff. Like, and I would have been vibing with it. I get that, you know, you kind of get to the point with it. But with how fast the song is and, like, just, like, how good it is, like, I'm like I wish I had more with it. But sonically beautiful, like, icing on the cake. Which icing I particularly like on cake. And, like, lyrically, it's also just, like, fun. It's definitely a fun time. I think it works with In the Alamo though, because I think it's her realizing that her own worth still, even though she's made a mistake, like, kind of, like, allowing her to reclaim a part of herself. Track number seven is Zap Zoom. Okay, this album is very inspired by video game sounds. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Ooh. I like the ah. Because that song that just makes you want to move. Ooh, I like that little like, percussive inner like, blue. Like that fill. Ooh, again, another good fill. That the zoom, zoom, zoom. Zap zoom and very much so zooming. Uh, it seems like she's in the song, you know, going into space and being like, I'm gonna find you on my comet, hoping to, you know, love you and give you love. And so, definitely within the ultra song sense, but also like the apasionata sound as well. So, definitely, you know, the hope to give someone love, I think that hopefulness that I think the second half of the album is really getting into. And sonically, it's also really fun. I think there's a lot of cool percussion fills I really like. I think I'm getting a distinct sense of the album. And I think for the most part, there's a lot of cool like video game sounds or stuff I at least I associate with video game and just like this nostalgia and like it gets mixed with like, you know, this tropical beachy vibes. And I think it's a cool idea for a project. Like, I didn't think that such a project would really be like that. But I'm really enjoying this project. I'm definitely feeling a sense of cohesion. Like, no, this is all one project that makes sense rather than a collection of singles. And I think I keep reiterating that. But I, I really am just kind of blown away because it's not what I expected. And so, like, yeah, Zap Zoom, it's fun. I can definitely see me listening to it again and enjoying, like, the overall aesthetic of it. Track number eight, now a papel de omen. Again, I don't know Brazilian Portuguese, so that pronunciation is probably not the best. Oh, that also feels like a throwback, but I feel like to like some 80s feeling. Oh, I like how it like kind of tumbled into this chorus. Oh, sing it, Pablo. Oh, okay. This feels very celebratory. I don't know if that's what's evidence in the lyrics, but it feels like that. I'm also just impressed by how fast she sang. Ooh, this is, oh, I think we're building. Where are we gonna go? Oh, yeah. Definitely drops in a nice way. Oh, there you go. 
So that was now the papel de homme, uh, which just translates to not a man's role. Interesting. And like, I definitely really enjoyed this song. Like, again, felt celebratory, felt throwbacky. It definitely fits sonically with the album. And like, lyrically, I'm like, this is like feeling like very much within like this whole narrative and like in a good way like it feels like it adds to it because like it seems like in this case like you know her ex is very much like i, I still don't want to get back with you i know you want to love me but like i want to leave you basically because like the cheating probably and is like just tired of that and like valid obviously and Pablo's like, after everything we live, basically, you just want to leave it, like, throw our love, like, in the air. And, like, yeah, I thought that was, like, a cool, like, thought. Like, I, th I think where one-on-one -on -one is, like, party time and, like, I'm, like, a bad chick, you know, in the, the club or whatever, or, like, you really want to get with me. Like, I feel like Batida with Tropical is, like, definitely a welcome, mature step for Pablo in terms of, like, the messages she's talking about because she's dealing with, like, actual, like, heartbreak here and, like, actually, you know, toying with the idea of, you know, someone not wanting her because of something that she did. I really appreciate that. It really humanizes, like, her as a human. Uh, rather than this, you know, mega the pop star icon that can really crush the game. I think she makes herself, you know, like at our level and something that we can actually relate to as humans. And like, yeah, I, I don't know. I really enjoyed this song. There's definitely some parts of it that I don't really know that much about. I know it's a calypso rhythm and certain rhythms and certain styles. I haven't fully paid attention to on all the other tracks. So if there's any ones I didn't share, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to, you know, have that space for enlightening myself as well as enlightening others but like yeah i really enjoyed this song as well i'm very happy because i think still that like every song that i've heard just for the first time today i like better than the singles before that so i, I really do appreciate that track number nine last track on the album bang bang is this gonna be in english or is she just gonna you know use bang bang and then the rest of it's gonna be in brazilian portuguese Bongi Bongi. <laughs> this has a feeling of like a western, but like remixed. Okay, sing it out and get those background voices of yourself too. Oh! Oh, that was a cool breakdown. Bongi Bongi Bongi. I just love that in particular. I think she's really showcased her full vocal on this song and a lot of other tracks here. This almost seems happy. I don't want to jump the gun with lyrics, but I think it might be a positive ending. Oh, that's a very subtle, subdued way to end the project. So that was Bong Bong, um, or Bang Bang, and I really enjoyed this song. Like, sonically, definitely also comes with, like, Calypso. Um, Pablo actually mentions that, like, he was inspired by Christina Aguilera's Dirty, um, and, like, you know, ruminating on, you know, how, like, the Calypso company, like, had, you know, international, like, you know, influence, but, like, was not being recognized at the time. And so, you know, she's taking matters into her own voice in, you know, doing a song like that, especially with how popular she is in Brazil and abroad. And so I really enjoyed this song. Uh, like, lyrically, it's interesting. It's primarily bangs. I believe actually if you were to take every lyric in the song, I think together there's more bangs than there are other lyrics. But I don't know about that for sure, but I think it's, I think it's close. And I think it's about like, the kiss and the love that's hitting her, like she's surrendering to it and it goes bang, bang. Rata the ta, you know, like standard gun noises. Uh, and so 
Like, I don't know. I think this is a very open-ended um, ending. I don't know if this is like how she feels that the lover forgives her. I don't know if this is her finding someone new and falling in love really quickly. Because I remember in previous songs of hers that she would be like, oh, like I can, you know, fall in love with someone so quickly. I just happen to love so many people. And so it could be like that, or it could be, you know, a thrilling, yay, they got back together kind of a vibe. She was talking about this love, like in the middle part of the album and like her, you know, thinking, oh, this love is, you know, the one, the true one for me, it's penetrating my heart. I think it shows like weakness and vulnerability, which I really appreciate. But I also think it could be, you know, built into that story as well of like, you know, a thrilling conclusion, a happy ending, if you will. With that said, we have finished this album and I am so happy I got to listen to this project. I was a little nervous, actually, because almost so for sure was not particularly my favorite song of hers. And Tristy Comte, like, I was like, it's good. But like, if these are the singles, I was a little antsy about that. I was a little anxious that like, it wouldn't be as good as I wanted it to be. But it was really good. And I think what I appreciate about it is that it was an album. Like, I distinctly think of this as an album. Certain songs, like, like they're all distinct. Uh, but I think like right now I'm like, oh, I really enjoyed Fatih Del Tropical rather than saying, oh, I really like this song and then this song. Like, obviously I'm going to have favorites, but I think I very much appreciated there being a cohesive message, a complete story. And I think like, obviously, she came out with her album before I even, you know, had my critique of 111, but if anyone else had that same critique of it being more like a bunch of singles, I think she really took that into account. I think sonically and lyrically it's very cohesive and like in a way that's, again, makes each song distinguishable and I, I can be like, oh, I like these songs better than others, but also it's just an enjoyable listening experience. Like I could listen to this front to back and not feel tired, bored. I mean, part of that is all the songs are short uh, and the project itself is rather on the shorter side. So there's that, but it's also, I think, just the fact that each song has similar enough elements where if you like one song, you're most likely going to like the others. And I appreciate that. I think that is something that I think works in her favor here, especially in terms of like telling a story. And she tells a really good story and I liked it. So yeah, I, I, yeah, I really enjoyed this project. I don't have many critiques of it. I think it's interesting that she chose the first two songs as the singles. Maybe she's trying to do a whole visual thing, so she's going in order, but like, I don't know. I'm not sure if that's in her cards. I don't know, because I mean, 111 had a lot of music videos for it, and even some I still haven't seen. Um, whereas, like here, we've only gotten two so far, but I think that's also partially because of the, you know, it's new. And she wanted something that was for the summer and this is definitely a summery time thing like you know arcades are very nostalgic and nostalgia works really well in the summer but also you know it's tropical and you know if you don't live near the equator like you need it during your personal summertime so i really appreciate that i think it was a good listen i think it was well timed on my part to listen to it now and i think yeah i'm very excited to see what she does next i'm very excited to explore more of this era she drops more music videos i'm also just excited to see more of Pablo Vitar in the future. I think she's done a lot of really cool things and I would love to see what she does in the future. With that said, here are some of my favorites of the top tier of the songs I love. The standouts are the ones I'm gonna be playing over and over. The songs in the middle are the songs I like. I'm gonna add them to my playlist, but they might not be the top of the top. And the songs at the bottom, which is not really my thing, doesn't mean they're a bad song, doesn't mean they can't be your favorite. It just means they might not be made for me, and that's okay, we have different opinions. Pablo Vitar did not create this project specifically for me, obviously. If you like this video, please like it, please comment on the little for me to react or listen to next. Please subscribe to my channel if you're already and you'd like to be. And thanks for watching. This is Turtle Stormer. Catch you later. It's storming turtles from out of the sky. Turtles don't need to know why.